Hey guys, it's Stark here. Today I'm going to show you how to go over the Ghostbusters blaster effect from uh, a few weeks ago from Film Riot. I'm not doing the entire thing where it scorches the wall, but that's totally fine. This just gets the point across to show you everything. And um, I know Eris will appreciate this, but his uh, outfit is entirely screen accurate. So there's something kind of neat I want to show you if you're not familiar, if you're up to date with CC 2015, but it's this nice little Mercury GPU acceleration thing. It's the same as in Premiere. So it'll use your video card if you have CUDA using an NVIDIA card. So if you're on a Mac, I don't know, maybe, but I don't know. You might have a AMD card, so you won't have CUDA and you'll have to use this. But it's not that big a deal. So as always, I'm in 16-bit uh, sRGB, linear color, and we're ready to go. So I'm just going to purge all memory. I already did it, but just in case, so you can see how quick this playback actually is. So this is very straightforward, and the bulk of it, if not 95% of it, and I saw in some of the comments was, oh, you're using Video Copilot Saber, and uh, you're correct, because it got the thing that we needed done fast. So we're going to use that and optical flares to basically get this entire thing over. So first thing we're going to do is, you know, have your comp, and then we're just going to duplicate this layer. What I'm actually going to do is I want to find where it starts to kind of turn on. So it's probably like right here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just this old school mask thing. And I'm not shutting this off just so I can see where it goes. And then all we're going to do is basically follow it. Just follow this guy around. So we have it. This is where it basically turns on. Now, probably wondering what I'm doing here, but we're actually going to use this, and we did it in an old Film Riot episode, kind of, because optical flares could use a luminance value or channel to use for the lens flare, so that way you don't actually have to keyframe it. And the thing that I like is that it'll kind of scale up with it and all of that. So you get kind of more of a organic motion. So all we're going to do is actually, we're just going to pre-compose the layer. And then we're just going to move it all in there. And we're just going to call this Luma Mat. All right. It's nothing special yet. And then what we want to do is we don't want anything beforehand. So we want the first keyframe and then we're going to make a new layer, solid black, okay? And then on this guy, pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and color correction. I'm just going to turn down the saturation down here. And then we're going to add a levels because we really want to squeeze out the, the bright parts of this. So you do with levels and then curves or whatever, but I'll show you. And then we're going to soften it. So let's go to, excuse all these plugins. I have far too many levels. And let me just expand this out. Nope, sorry. I just want the brightest parts. So even, let me get rid of, maybe. There. And actually what we could do is just, because you can see this little bit right here, so we'll just go ahead and bring the expansion in. Now we're not done, I mean, we kind of are, but we're not. The only last thing I'm going to do is um, add a fast blur, which my gripe is now it's in the uh, obsolete pile, <laughs> so now it's going to get thrown away. and then. Uh, that's basically it. So what you're going to have is, you see these things where it kind of goes in and out. So it kind of adds this cool little dynamic fluttering to it. And now that's, this layer is basically, that's all we're using it for. So 
Here we go. So now what we're going to do is just to get it out of the way, we'll add a lens flare. And I personally love big dramatic flares. Ryan does not, but because I'm doing the tutorial, I am just going to blast it out. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to go to optical flares, and then we'll just set this up to see this luminance. And then we will so set our source layer at luma mat, and then just do on transparent. Do that. And the reason nothing's happening is because, get ready. Ooh. Cool, right? See how it kind of flutters around? And then I'm not going to track the color. I'm not going to track the brightness, but the scale I will. We're going to change this to multiply, and then I think in our thing we had it sort of just purpley, because we didn't want it like a, a flare that was too modern, like those blue kind that you kind of see like with every movie, and then just changed it to add so that way it mixes into the bright part. Let's choose a cool, I don't know, let's try FDA. And actually, I'm liking that off the bat. And then we'll just preview this. And again, I'm using the Mercury playback, so it goes really quick. Almost real time, not really, about half. And you get some of these glows, and you can get rid of it, but I'm going to keep it because it's kind of cool. So it kind of just looks like Eris right now has this magical wand that is taking over. So there you go. Let's play it back. And we're like one third of the step of the way there. Now there's only actually two more layers to add. So, eh, three if you count this next part. So I'm actually gonna go in and find the layer to where I need to start tracking. So it's frame 78. And on our original thing, I'm just gonna add a marker by hitting your asterisk key. And then we're gonna make a new null object. Okay. Now this part is kind of annoying and you could track it, but honestly, it's just one of those things where I just do it by hand because then I could get exactly what I want. So I am going to, again, fast forward through this part because it is fairly tedious. Okay, so we're back here, and uh, the tedious part is over. And I'm just going to actually I'm gonna hit B just to bring up the parts that we kind of only care about. Actually, click. So you could use the point tracker, but I don't know. Like, it is kind of very tedious. My wrist kind of hurts. <laughs> but it's, it, I don't know. It just gets you exactly what you want. So we're going to go to the basically the where the magic happens here. So I'm actually gonna turn, I'm hit this thing to turn off the viewer when it's not selected. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a new solid and we're gonna call this um, stream main. Okay, and then we're gonna go to effect, video copilot, saber. And then this is, if you're confused, the course start. So this is what we're basically concerned with. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna alt click on course start. And not surprisingly enough, we're gonna just attach it to position here. And alpha mode, you go through all of these, but honestly, I am, I just put everything into add because I would do it anyways. It kind of looks like a light saber. Um, but here you go. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. We're going to keyframe this just core end now. And then you're going to start to see probably right here is where he starts to like go to the side. So let's just make sure that this adds up. 
maybe speed it up a little more. Doesn't take that much finessing. So maybe there, I'll hit U just to see where we're at. Delete that guy. Still feel like it's a little off. Now the reason I'm doing all of this just to begin with too is because before we start doing it, like this is the, the part that it's just sort of like setting it up and this is the part that it's kind of the most annoying part. So it's best to get it out of the way before we start doing all the cool, fun stuff. So I don't want to give away the huge, cool illusion here, but let's just zoom in, fit up to 100. And then I will we'll just run preview it. Oop. Now, I don't have motion blur on yet, nor do I have on the lens flare. When I do, it'll kind of add it. And it's not like a perfect thing, but that's fine. So for the mainstream, I actually used the one called Star Killer, the preset, because it had everything I wanted. So it's already sort of instantly cool. Now, before we do that, we have to go ahead and do the uh, part where it grows. So end offset, okay? We're just gonna do it really quick. So we're gonna start it off at zero, of course, and then maybe like right there where his face is at maximum carnage for killing ghosts soon. Okay. And then just up. Oh. And then we want it to be kind of the core size because it is, you know, Ghostbusters, like very thick like that. And then nice orange, like there. Now I'm going to play this back and you might notice something that kind of looks sort of goofy. So let's just play it back. And you'll see this noise here. It's not really... Looking, it kind of looks like he's just holding a weird thing. So we're gonna basically just offset the um, movement of that. Yeah, looks like he's just shaking a toy lightsaber with fake stuff. So, okay, so I just upped the time here to 1000 and then this guy right here, the distortion amount, I wanna turn that up a little bit and then should be good there. And you can play with all of these settings, like the glow bias, bring it in. I think something like there is cool. And all I'm gonna actually do now, because I like the settings and I wanna keep it. And let's make sure that the motion blur is actually on. And it is, so. else looks good. So now we're just going to duplicate this and I'm going to hit stream secondary. Now with this one, I'm actually going to just use the preset called wavelet. And it's going to have, what's cool is it's going to have everything. So you get this kind of electricity look to it. And with this, we're going to add like a nice blue. Let's just play it back. See, it's just kind of mixing stuff. So what's kind of funny is it gives the illusion that it is moving forward, but it's, it's really not. And then we'll turn on the wall. Do this. So you see all this motion blur. You could just see that all of the lighting and the glows, it kind of adds, especially just because of uh, how they lit it. Let's mess around with this, because that is really bright. So we're gonna do something 
Yeah. Super dramatic. So like 280, but we could bring down the scale to like 75. So then it kind of balances it out. And then you're getting this. Now we just have one more part. And see, this is the whole thing about using presets that I kind of like to get on my high horse about, which is it's cool to use them, just modify them. Like even changing the colors and stuff. That's all I did. Like I like this is still my setup using a preset. And even with this this next part, I'm gonna do a preset. I mean, it was a modified one, but then I saved it, and it was my spark. So I'm just going to do sparks, okay? And we're just going to go to effect, trap code, particular. And the new particular is pretty cool because if you're used to uh, magic bullet looks, then you, this should look familiar, and it's kind of cool, but... I have a preset for this, but I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. So I have, I, I put Stark just so I could recognize it, not because I'm full of myself, but this is the one that I use. And I think I modified it from one of theirs, which may have been actually, um, I think it was this. And what's cool is now you could just do uniform, but then you could go to the beginning here, which I love because I hated keyframing this, is just continuous. So kind of took that and then I just modified it to my own needs here. And let's hope it doesn't crash. Cool. So then I'm just gonna hit apply and I hope that was in there. Now, because we have this null, it's the same exact thing. So we're just gonna go to Sparks. We're gonna go to the position X, Y, because we don't have any 3D data. So it's just that much easier. And then let's go down to the bottom here. And then the null there. And then we'll change this to add. But the problem is, let's, let's play it back. I don't, it's not, right enough. And I, I feel like the gravity is still not even like enough. So again, what we could do is just go to the physics and then we'll turn up the gravity even more. And then I'm gonna use old school color, just tint. Just good old orange. kind of brings it out a bit and then let's try to let's try curves so there you go and then maybe even that maybe they're lasting too long so maybe and then we basically have the effect so let's just play the whole thing back also a heads up what I did use is I did use on this layer in my actual comp I used uh, effect video copilot color vibrance on and it kind of tames it down a little bit but I'm gonna I'm kind of happy with how it is right here I know it's brighter in the actual thing but I could live with that and let's let's just see hopefully it doesn't try to crash just go to stylize glow and then there you go you can kind of mess with the threshold if you want but something like that's good and what really I think makes this shot work is just how they lit it again. I already said that, but still, because just because you have this red light here and it's on Justin's face and then the orange and then here, like it, you can't really tell that it, I mean, you, I don't know. <laughs> you could tell that it's, it, it's in the scene or at least the lighting lends itself to fitting within the scene. So that's the cool part about it. So that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, you could ask me on Twitter at mstarktv. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this because it was kind of fun. And it wasn't that complex, actually. It was really simple, especially just taking the presets and modifying them. I mean, even in optical flares, I, I barely touch stuff. I just change the color and then whatever. So I hope you found some of the stuff useful and look forward to doing the next one. So thank you, guys.